Hello and welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 20. In this tutorial we are going to focus on doing some basic texturing. The first thing we need to do before we can do any texturing is we have to create something called a sampler state. So we are going to create this in our graphics header. Now let's just go to our initialize DirectX and towards the bottom here we can go ahead and set up our sampler state. So it's going to look something like this. We create our description variable, we zero it out. For the filter, uh, we're not going to get too into this. There's a bunch of different filtering options. This is just the one we're using. All right, so you see we have this address U, V, and W. The address U is our X coordinate on the texture. The address V is our Y coordinates, and the address W we are not actually going to get into, it's for 3D textures. In this case, we are just telling it that we want to wrap the texture. So what this means is, if we map something from 0 to 1, it will just map what shows up in our texture, from the left to right, for example, for you. If we map from 0 to 2, it will wrap it, so it will do it twice. And we'll get to that as soon as we actually render something. Let's do a quick review of how texture coordinates are laid out. The way they work is the very top left is 0, 0 for X and Y. The very top right is 1, 0. The bottom left is 0, 1. And the bottom right is 1, 1. So it works similar to our window coordinates where the top left is 0, 0 and the bottom right is width times height. However, instead of our width and height, we just have ones. Next, we have our comparison function, and we're just going to use never for this. This is if we're comparing a pixel, I guess, with a previous sample that was taken, if they overlap or something. Next, we have our minimum level of detail and maximum level of detail. Now, zero is the highest level. So we're saying the minimum level is the highest, and the maximum is just whatever the maximum float value is. So this will just give us a range of all the values, essentially. Next, we are creating our sampler state. We just pass an address of the description and then call get address of on the sampler state. And if it fails, we are locking the error. Next, in our pixel shader, we need to add a variable for our sampler state and a variable for our texture. Now, we have these registers for our textures and samplers. So when we put register T0, it's saying to use the first uh, register slot for our texture and the same idea with the sampler. When we use S0, it's the first register we have for our samplers. We're going to have to change something where before we were getting the uh, color. Instead, we want to get the texture coordinate. And We'll just put text chord for that. Like I said, the semantics here don't really matter. We can put in, I could call this, you know, um, poo poo pee pee if I wanted. And as long as it matches in the vertex shader and input layout, it doesn't matter. But I'm not going to name it that because if someone goes through the code, they'd probably not know what that is. So I'll call it text chord. Now we need to figure out what the texture coordinate will be for this pixel. So what we would do is on our object texture, we would call sample. And the first argument is our sampler state. So we would pass in the sampler state. And the second argument is the location. So we would just pass in the in-text chord. Now also one thing we'll have to change is in-text chord is a float three. We'll have to change that to a float two. And then when we return this color, we will return pixel color, and the alpha would just be 1. So now we have this object texture and object sampler state. Next what we are going to do is update our vertex shader and our vertex layout and our input layout to all match uh, having this texture coordinate instead of having a color value. First let's go into our vertex shader. 
we're going to change it from in color to in text chord. It's going to be a float to, and then from out color to out text chord. The semantic is going to be text chord instead of color. And here we're going to set the out text chord equal to the in text chord and also change the out text chord to a float to. Next, let's go and update our input layout. So let's go to where we are initializing our shaders. We're going to change this from color to text chord. And currently it is three, it's a float three, R32G32, B32. We only need the X and Y coordinates, so we can just pass in R32G32. Let's go to where we are initializing our vertex buffers. We had that red triangle and that green triangle. I'm just going to remove the green triangle since that was really just for demonstrating the depth buffer and from a previous tutorial. And we're going to look at our triangle. So we have our X value, our Y value, our Z value, and then our red, green, blue. So we need to change this to have a U value and a V value for our texture coordinates. So let's go back up to the vertex header and we're going to change this to a float two. And instead of color, it's going to be called text chord. And instead of RGB, it's going to be U. All right, so we almost have this set up how we need it. Let's see. Now in our vertices, we have our coordinates we need to set for U and V. And for now, for this triangle, we are just going to set it up like this. So currently we have the bottom left, the top middle, and the bottom right. For our texture coordinates, for the bottom left, we are just going to pass in 0, 1, because that is 0 for our x value on our texture and 1 for the y, it's the very bottom. For the bottom right, we're going to pass in 1, 1, since that's at the bottom right of our texture. For the top middle, we are going to pass in 0 0.5 for the x and 0 for the y, since this is halfway across the x-axis, and on the y-axis is at the very top for our v. So let's go ahead and implement that. So the bottom left we said was 0, 1. The top middle was 0 0.50. 0. And the bottom right was 1, 1. Next in our render frame, we have to set what our sampler is. So what we would do is device context set sampler for our pixel shader. Start slot is 0, number of samplers is 1, and the pointer to our pointer of samplers, we will just call sampler state get address of. Now, you see we had the start slot and the number of samplers for this. Back in our pixel shader, for our start slot, uh, we're starting at 0, and it's just one sampler. So we just passed in one for number of samplers. I guess you could theoretically have multiple in a row and set them all at once. So now if we go and test this, the question is, what are we going to get? Well, first let's go ahead and take out, we have this code still where we were drawing that green triangle. Let's take that out. And in our graphics header, let's remove that vertex buffer because we don't need it. And let's test this and see what we get. All right, so what we get is we get all of these letters. And you might be wondering, okay, why are we getting all of these letters? We haven't even loaded in a texture. Well, maybe to make this more clear, let's change our triangle to a square. Let's exit out of this. And for our square, we are going to obviously to split it into two triangles. So down on our vertices, change this to textured square. And for our first triangle, let's see, we have the bottom left. Remember, it has to be clockwise. We'll have the top left, which will be negative 0.5f, 0.5. And then we'll have the top right. 
in the top right would just be let's see positive, positive 0 0.5. For our texture coordinates, the bottom left would be 0 for the x, 1 for the y, that's right. The top left would be 0 for the, or I guess u and v, not x and y. 0 for the u, 0 for the v, and the top right would be 1 for the u, 0 for the v. So currently we have this part colored in, so now we have to do our second triangle from the bottom left to the top right to the bottom right. So we can just copy the bottom left, copy the top right, and now we need to do the bottom right. Bottom right and the coordinate would be 1, 1 for the u and v, and it would be a negative 0.5f on the y value. So let's go back to where we were drawing and let's draw this whole square. So instead of drawing three for our triangle, we'll have to draw six because now we have six vertices. Let's debug this and see what we get. Okay, so hopefully it makes a little more sense now. This is actually the texture that is being used to render our text when we render the sprite font. So the way that it works is in DirectX, the last state that you had set everything to, it gets saved. So that is why for every render frame, we are setting the input layout, the primitive topo topology, I don't want to say it wrong, the primitive topology, the state for the rasterizer, the depth stencil state, all of this stuff. Because if we don't set it again before we draw, then something else along the way could have changed it before we get back to rendering our next frame. For example, uh, when we render our uh, font, it changes a lot of this stuff. And one of them is that it's actually setting this texture. What we would expect is to just have nothing here because we don't have a texture loaded. But instead, we're using the last loaded texture uh, in that slot, which was actually loaded from our sprite batch. So what do we have to do now? Well, we have to uh, create a object to store our texture and we have to load in a texture. So in our graphics header, let's create an object to store our texture. So we are going to create a com pointer to a ID 3D11 shader resource view called my texture. Right, my Visual Studio started breaking so I had to restart it. So we had created this ID 3D11 shader resource view to store our texture in and we need to actually be able to load the texture. So we're going to include the, I think it's WIC texture loader. Yeah, WIC texture loader from the DirectX toolkit. Let's go to our initialize scene. We're just going to initialize the texture at the end of this. We will need a texture to load in. So I'm going to create a folder called textures. And I've made this very professional uh, picture here from my YouTube picture. All right, so the way that we are going to load in this texture is we're going to call create WIC texture from file. And we are going to get a pointer to our device. We're going to pass in the path to the file. And the next two arguments, you can either store this texture in a ID3D11 resource, or you can store it in a ID3D11 shader resource view. Now we're using a shader resource view because that's how we need to pass it to our pixel shader. So in that case, I'm just passing null pointer since I don't need it in a resource, I just need it in the resource view. Of course, if it fails to load, we are logging the error. And next we need to go up to where we are drawing and before we draw our square we need to set our shader resources in our pixel shader so for our device context we're going to call ps set shader resources and this is setting uh, that texture back in our pixel shader this is setting this object texture value so we will set the resources and the start slot's zero. The number of uh, views is one, it's just one texture. And then we're going to call get address of on my texture. And if we run this, all right, we get that and that's all great. Now there 
is a chance that this won't work for you, like the texture won't load. And here is, first let's talk about why that is, and then let's talk about how to fix it. So if we go down to create WIC texture from file, let's pull up the documentation on this. Okay, and in this documentation, in the initialization, it says the library assumes that the client code will have already called co-initialize as needed by the application before calling any Windows image imaging component functionality. So all we need to do is inside of our source CPP, we are going to call co-initialize and just pass in uh, null for the argument. It returns an h result, so, so h result hr equals co-initialize and if it failed, all right, let's run that again. Okay, and it still works fine. I wish I could demonstrate this not working, but um, I, don't, I don't know, for some reason it's working. I thought the texture would be black, but it's not. But yeah, that is all that we are going to cover for this tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we will probably get into indexing.